We've been waiting a long time for this one, gang. Greetings and welcome to SmartWatchSticks.com. In this box is a smartwatch that does it all. And I mean, really, it just about does it all. This thing is incredible. If you want a health-focused smartwatch, we are looking at an interesting watch, the VKE400. It's coming from a brand new uh, partner with us, Theatos, I believe is how you pronounce it. And it does ECG, blood oxygen, heart rate, yada, yada, yada. And it can do blood glucose. This is the first one I brought in that has the ability to do online blood glucose reading. Is it accurate? No. There, I said it right there. But I don't know. What I don't know is that it might be. And you, if you need to take blood glucose or ECG readings or any of these other ones, will really need to test it against calibrated equipment. I want to put that out right away. There are two configurations of this watch. Before I open the box and even show it to you, there's the standard watch for about $89. Perhaps I can get it cheaper for you with a good uh, coupon discount. But for 10 bucks more, you can add on to this a special little device that you take the bands off and put the watch on. You can hold it in your hand. You can wear a strap around your body. You can do all kinds of things. Here's an example. Here's regular wearing it as a watch. Then you can touch the two plates for the ECG on opposite sides and get a measurement that way. You can wear the chest chat strap around, or you can even go into a patch mode where you use stick-on patches to stick it onto your body and get those readings. Really, really nice. What's it got inside of it? Let's take a look. Here you go. It is non-invasive blood glucose monitoring, an ECG, sometimes called EKG. That's the German spelling of it. Blood pressure, heart rate variability monitoring, okay, um, and heart rate monitoring, blood oxygen, body surface temperature, yep, got the thermometer going for it, a pro ECG chest strap we just saw, multi-workout mode, and yeah, believe it or not, long battery life. I was really surprised how long the battery is lasting, especially with everything turned on, all of it running all night long. Amazing. This I found interesting, a kind of a statement about uh, the company. And then in bold italics here, all goods are authentic with genuine patents. Counterfeits must be investigated. Please identify our products. This is the manufacturer of this device, and they hold the actual patents for it. So you're getting right to the horse's mouth. It's doing uh, all of its connectivity via Bluetooth uh, 5.1 and full touch screen. It's a zinc alloy case, environmental TPU leather watch band, magnetic suction charging, uh, USB 2 standard, and these are all the different activities inside of it. Now, I know you want to see it, so I'm going to pull it out. Very easy to do. It's got just a little blue translucent screen on the front, and very, very important that you remove the plastic film from the back because you need your body needs to touch these electrical plates on your arm while you're touching this electrical plate here in order to get the ECG connection. Deeper in the box, you find that we've got the standard two-pin kind of connector. It's a little bit wider, the pins are, than what you find on a lot of them, but boy, is it good. And it, it'll hold on to the watch, oh, almost as strong enough to hold the whole thing in your hand. Um, USB on the other side, and then there's a little manual and some information cards in here. In Chinese, there's a QR, uh, QC, not QR, but a QC thing. And it's basically telling you about how to properly do the ECG testing uh, method with a bracelet or a watch. It's a pretty old card. I've seen that for quite a few of the older products we reviewed. But it's still, it applies. You have to make an electrical circuit. Here's the smartwatch user guide for this one. We're going to run through it very quickly. It's using the H-Band app, and that is one of the best apps out there. Actually, it'll also pair to the H-Band 2 app which is a little upgrade from that in terms of putting all of your data in at the very beginning when you register. We'll work with either one, so uh, if you happen to have more than one device that uses the H type of apps, um, you could have one of them uh, tethered to one of those apps and one to the other one. 
I believe we're going to stick with the H band on this one. Later, there's another watch I'm going to review, and we'll have it on the H band 2 app. Okay, it's just showing you basic functions with some pictures, and then it switches to a different language. Here it is, nice and sleek, very well built. IP68, they, you know, splash proof and stuff, and probably could be lightly put in water, but I wouldn't swim with it. Definitely not with the ECG circuitry and everything. Long press on the side, hold it for just a, a moment or two. It'll vibrate and pop immediately right into the first watch face. Now, folks, this is on the lowest brightness setting. I just checked it. It can get way, way up there. So much so that it literally would just completely wash out the screen here. So this is an easy one to see outdoors on top of all of the functions that it's got. You can set the timeout uh, from 5 seconds up to, I believe, about 20 seconds. We'll do that so that it'll stay a long time. You saw that I got here by pulling down. You have uh, find your phone, the brightness, uh, do not disturb capability information. Says it's the E400 we're looking at. And then your overall settings. Now getting in here is where we were at that screen already for setting those things up. Here you have a bunch of switches. Heart rate monitor, heart rate alert, and blood pressure monitor. You also have blood oxygen that you can turn on or off for monitoring at night. And a blood oxygen alert is with this one. Here's blood glucose monitoring and all day um, sleep monitoring. Hmm. <laughs> In case you fall asleep at school, right? And then body temperature all day monitoring as well. So all different levels of power savings if you want to. If there's some of those you don't need. Then you have the basic switches for twist your wrist to see the time and sedentary reminder to tell you get up and walk around if you've been sitting too long. Overall notifications, it has a few of them in here and some others you can set up from the app. And of course, it's going to include your um, SMS for text messaging and incoming calling. Not a Bluetooth calling watch per se, but you can see who's calling or check out the texts if you turn those on and have it paired to your phone. Overall languages, not a whole lot. There's some Chinese, English, European languages in here. That's about it. Uh, and then the H-band QR code for downloading the app. Of course, we'll have a link in the show notes for you for that. And system is, again, that information. You can come down here and erase all of the data off of the watch if you want to. And, of course, turn the power off as well. That was from here. Now let's go around. This is where it gets really interesting. First uh, tab around is your uh, step count. Got 900 steps, calories burned, distance traveled, and rings that you can close. Another one over. Now you notice I do this all the time to see if it'll slide up. Some of them do, some of them don't. This shows you your overall uh, sleep information. And it's saying deep, and it's acting like it should show you more, but it's not. Um, but we'll check that on the app. Here's our all-day heart rate, and you can see little dots for each of the hours uh, I've been wearing it. I've had it off a little bit getting ready for the app. I charged it uh, for the review and then put it on and then took it off again. So you can see it won't take readings on the times that you have it off. It just vibrated three times uh, because I'm not touching or covering the sensors. So it does not take readings of thin air, which is great. Here is a uh, blood pressure reading capability. It shows you your last reading. Touch that button and it'll start up again. Here it lands on blood oxygen using the red diode and it'll take a reading for you there. Here is the blood glucose. Now look at this. This is interesting. I don't know a lot about blood glucose, honestly. I imagine those that are in a diabetic situation rely on it heavily. But I do know that I was pretty much just uh, calm this morning. Then I had lunch, and it's perked up, and then it went back down again. Then I took it off and put it back on and took it off. But I've seen this here, and then yesterday when I was working with it, I see these spikes in blood oxygen starting right after I eat a meal. And I thought, well, that's very interesting. Hmm. Here's the ECG. We land on here, and you'll use the plate to take an ECG reading. Temperature is done here. There's a probe right here in the back and I tap that button 
And here is the temperature information. It's showing you your overall temperature and this location you're at right under where my thumb is. Your highs, your lows, the forecast for the next day are on here. Slide it once more and you're back to the opening screen, whatever uh, watch face that you want to have on here. When you slide up, you get notifications pushed from your phone. And of course, down gives you all of those controls. On and off is right here, and when you press this side now, we jump into the overall app drawer, which includes workouts. These are the different things you can do, indoor, outdoor runs and hiking, stationary bikes, basic stuff. The pedometer, we saw the results of that, and same thing with sleep, heart rate, blood pressure, ECG, blood oxygen, body temperature, glucose, we saw all of that. PTT. This is when you're going to be using the uh, strap mode on this watch and you'll be taking a reading without it being worn as a watch is how I understand it. Breath training, you can set the number of minutes you want to go and how many times you'll be asked to inhale and exhale is on this one. Weather we saw, notifications, you've got alarms you can set in here, but you have to set them from the app, not from within the watch. But you do have countdown timers if you want. You can put those on. Remote music player when you're connected with Bluetooth to your watch. And find your phone. Ladies, there's a whole thing in there in the app that you can set up to monitor your cycle and see where you are instantly on the watch. You can use it as a remote camera. And again, we're back to uh, settings, which we already looked at. Now, with the watch on, let's take a few of these actual measurements. Heart rate's pretty simple. Tap on it. It immediately starts using the green diode technology, giving you a beats per minute reading there, while it's basically got the chart that it's been doing the continuous rate heart rate on. doesn't take too terribly long, as long as you're not moving around too much, and it'll flash a number on, and it'll just kind of keep moving around a little bit as it assesses what your heart rate is. Come back from that. We're going to look at blood pressure. Now, blood pressure, you have to initiate. It's not going to start automatically. Touch the button, and it uh, takes it about a minute or so. And as it goes through this cycle, it's going to be, again, using green diode technology to um, do some analysis of your blood moving through your capillaries to give you an estimate of your blood pressure. And again, this is an estimate of a deviation from a norm, and most everybody's norm is 120 over 80. And if you put in your personal readings, it can be adjusted a little bit from there. There's a number we got for this particular reading, and then we can come down to ECG. Going to come back to that because it's a little more detailed. Uh, blood oxygen, similar type of thing. We've got red diode technology going. It's going to percolate array and give you an overall um, assessment of your blood oxygen. There we go. You see it bouncing around a little bit between about 95 and 99, and it'll just settle on a final number for its estimate of blood oxygen. Body temperature. Again, you have to initiate that with the big yellow button there, and it is set to read in either Fahrenheit or centigrade, and it gives you your skin temperature, the actual measurement, and an estimate of your body temperature from that. And of course, this is all in the app as well as it does it on a regular basis. Then finally, blood glucose is looking kind of like the heart rate did. You can see the bumps in the glucose. And if you want your actual numbers, it showed you the previous one. You tap that button, stay still using green diode technology and a different type of an algorithm. It's assessing what your current blood oxygen level is, 6.43. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now there's a PTT and there's an ECG. Let's walk through this. This is real important to understand how it works. When you tap it and you put your finger on the electrode and the other two electrodes are touching your arm and you're in the ECG mode, it's going to be using the electrical conductivity of your body to give you a heart rate. You see the heart rate there? But it's not giving you an ECG chart. So... This is like a secondary way of taking your heart rate. If you're doing like heart rate recovery or something after exercising really hard, uh, you might get um, different readings between the two and decide which one works best for you. It's just going to do that, what you're seeing, until that little white circle down at the bottom is completely filled in. 
Now, it would be nice if it was recording the chart, that's actual ECG chart to the watch, and would transfer that later so you could uh, analyze it like you do when you take a reading from the app. But it doesn't do that, as far as I know. You can't transfer them over. So you're just getting a heart rate. But don't be forlorn. You're okay. Remember I mentioned beyond ECG was a thing called PTT? PTT is a whole different beast. When I tap this and I bring the app over, I want you to look carefully at the app up in this corner. When I start, it flashes up here and it says it's measuring. That means it has gone into a real-time, real connected uh, ECG measurement. Instead of launching it from the app back to the watch, which you'll see when we cover the app, it's doing it the other way around. Now it says it's measuring. I got to touch the button here, make the circuit. Well, before we do that, let's touch that button there. Okay, now it brought up the chart. It says lead fail. Yes, because I'm not touching the side. Now, do you see the chart down below? It's evolving. Uh, by simply touching the watch. Now it's not recording this yet. If I hit start recording and say start recording, here we go. We're actually beginning a recording of the heart rate. Note the, notice the watch has just gone off. You have to sit here and hold the button and you have to stay within Bluetooth range, but you can get an actual ECG test. Now it can go, uh, I don't know. We'll let you know in the show notes, I think 10 minutes or so. Uh, I think you have to get a minimum maybe of one minute. We're at 30 seconds right now, so I'm going to end recording like this. Yeah, it says it's insufficient to generate the data. So test it. You probably need at least a minute or so, but if you want to get the actual recording, you can. And this is definitely live and working. You can tell with the time delay that when you touch it and mess around with it, you'll get a response coming from it. So when we're ready to get out of this and you finished whatever recording you're going to do, come back to the watch, activate it, hit the little X button, exit now, you're out of the PTT, you've exited that mode, it's no longer showing up on the app, and your recorded information will be in the ECG section. Now here it is on, and I want to show you a couple of the different watch faces while we're here. These are the stock faces that come with it, and it is full moon right now, so it looks like uh, pretty nice. I'm not sure if the moon actually tracks the cycle or not. Here's another stock face. And then you have a selection in the app that you can download. This is one of them that I brought. I like that one a lot. It's very subtle and nice to use at night. The app, of course, is H-Band. We have covered this many, many times, so we're going to run through it again. There have been some updates to it. From the Google Play Store, it looks like this. It's one word, H-Band. Hit open. You'll come in, get uh, your own account set up, allow it to connect. Um, you pair it with the watch or the, uh, yeah, the watch, and you do that like right in here. It's already been paired, so now it's going through and reconnecting to this device. There we go. Okay, we're all set. Now, let's look at all of these. In the pedometer tab, you see your step count by hour. You also see the breakdown here. It's 1.36 in the afternoon, so this is the time I wasn't wearing it. Here's sometimes earlier today I was. So you can get the breakout every half hour of your actual step count. When you get into sleep, here's last night's sleep time. Now, this is kind of strange, and it's been characteristic of this app forever. The uh, REM sleep, the light sleep, the deep sleep. It, it is so fine-tuned right there, it's kind of hard to make any sense out of it. Um, personally, I don't like it displayed like this, because I can't really tell when I was deep in REM. It sort of looks like that part of the night I went in and out of REM sleep. I don't think that really happens. I think once you're in it, you're in it for a good long period of time. So there are other watches and bands I'd recommend if you're really looking to track your sleep information accurately. And rings, too, that'll do that. But you do get a uh, overall summary. So in terms of big data, you can find out your total sleep time, how much of it you were dreaming and deep and light and wake and all of that. It also tells you how long it took you to fall asleep and what your efficiency is. Although I don't never, uh, I don't generally see that change very much. 
wherever you touch on here will show you that phase you were in at that particular time of night. And it does give you a sleep quality score every night so you can see how you did. And there's last night's just uh, compare. I was at a number three. I had a couple of awake times here. They're showing up. So you do get different data every day. That's for sleep. Continuous heart rate now. It was going along up here. Then I took the watch off and it just kind of jumps and connects the points um, in the empty spaces. It doesn't drop down to zero. But that, it, that data is there. Now what I like is you see the white part here? That's also showing your activity level. So you see how my heart was spiking while I had some activity going on. And indeed, I was going up and down some stairs during that time of the uh, morning, late morning. Maximum, minimum, average, your zones that you were in. And if you want all the details, here you go. Every single reading per minute in, e in these five-minute increments. So these are your exact individual heart rates taken every single minute. It's all in here. They give you all of that data, uh, but it's kind of buried. You can turn the heart rate alert uh, on and off, and you can set how much you want it to, or how high you or low you want it to be when it actually notifies you that you've exceeded your uh, threshold. Heart rate variability, folks. This is so cool what these guys can do in HRV, which is kind of an indicator of stress and overall heart health. First of all, you get the basic chart that shows you your heart rate variability at different times of the day and night. Um, you have your HRV data right here in milliseconds, and you have a thing called a Lorenz scatter diagram. This is a very interesting plot of HRV versus the HRV just before it. It's a kind of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, positioning. And it works out that when it's plotted over time, you get this kind of a scatter diagram that this guy Lorenz came up with. And the typical one is a comet. It's kind of big at the top and then trails down at the bottom like that. That's pretty much indicative of being okay. But it can be reversed where it's a rocket. It's spread out more at the top. And it'll give you a description of what that particular uh, look would be. There's a shuttle, a baton, a grenade, a fork. I'm just skipping around, but you can look at these in the app and see what they mean and so forth. There's several different patterns and they're all discussed in here. So what you do, wearing this night after night after night, and then coming back up to the change in days, you can go back and forth and kind of compare how did last night's look against the current night. See? Got a couple of nights in here. You get several of those values going. And you can look for kind of trends or whether there's something that uh, could flag you that you want to go deeper into. There's also an overall report on your heart rate change, sudden change of heart rate, sc uh, scored on a scale of 1 to 5, right? Your neutral state and heart rhythm change. So it's uh, looking at all of those characteristics from your heart rate variability, giving you an overall health index, showing you the actual chart itself, and of course the Lorenz scatter diagram. Beautiful information. Blood pressure. Uh, systolic over diastolic. You can set up your own personal numbers in there, which I have, and then it'll do the reference against those, which tends to give you numbers that appear more closely aligned with what your true blood pressure is. But always, always, always check with a cuff to see if the readings you're getting from the, the device, the watch here, match up with what you're getting with a calibrated cuff or from your doctor's office. But you're getting every five minutes, if you have it set for that, blood pressure readings, and it's showing on a graph. And of course, you got yesterday's highest, lowest, all of those things are there too. Blood oxygen. This is a biggie. This is where we look at uh, how well your uh, blood is oxygenated. And throughout the night in particular is when you might see some dips that would represent sleep apnea. And it will identify them if your uh, blood oxygen goes too low. That's good to know because if you're asleep, you don't really realize that's happening. So you might use this as some information gathering point for later discussions with your doctor about um, any kind of intervention you may need related to that. It is giving you your blood oxygen concentration reference value, your respiratory rate throughout the night, and showing you typically 
where uh, you would end up. Uncle Tix is down on the low side because I've learned how to talk and talk and talk without breathing, so I don't breathe very long in any of my breaths. Hypoxia time, cardiac load, lots of things, range of sleeping activity, and you want to pay attention to this one, hypoxia and arousal. This is... um, as if monitoring your nocturnal, that's your nighttime blood oxygen value, if it's too low continuously, your health may be affected. Turning this on will cause the watch to vibrate while you're asleep in holding your breath, perhaps getting a low blood oxygen reading. I haven't done that on this one. I've only done it a couple of nights, but other ones that use these H-band uh, apps, I have had incidents where I suddenly wake up going, Ugh! you know, gasping. And I woke up because I felt the vibration in my wrist. So it it really can work. It's amazing. Here's our blood glucose. This is a whole new area. Um, These are the kind of numbers. 4.08. After lunch, I went up to 7.1. Then I've fallen back down. Probably a sugar crash or something. I don't know. 4.87. Now I'm climbing back up again. I don't know. I can't talk about this intelligently, even unintelligently. I can just simply show you the data. So if you are familiar with blood glucose readings, this may hopefully give you some insight on whether or not this type of a device would be beneficial for you. You can turn it on or off here if you want, your maximum, minimum, and I don't... Yeah, I did have yesterday, okay. Breakfast and lunch and then dinner and then everything in between. So it does seem to ride the current of whatever's going on after I have a meal. That's the best I can say about it right now. But that's the blood glucose. Body temperature with the thermometer in there. You can set it for centigrade or Fahrenheit. You can get uh, your temperature ranges between half hour increments like this. And that's all available. And you can kind of take a look at it all through here. And of course, look at any particular area in detail. Great way to assess whether or not you might be getting an infection, catching a cold, or just not recovering well from the night before if you uh, see a, a, a change there. By the way, you've got body temperature and then you've got overall skin temperature. It's measuring skin temperature and predicting the body temperature from that. So you have those pieces of information. And I'm not sure these long ones, I think they're errors or that was when I had the watch off and it's not taking accurate readings. So it just kind of, you ignore those as they occur in here. That's the body temperature. And then we get into uh, female. This is your lady's cycle. This is where you can start when your period began and when it uh, is shifting and what state uh, you're in will be shown uh, on the watch for you. And then you can change the module. So the last one is the ECG. Now, we're going to talk about this. You're going to hit start testing. But before you do that, you want to make sure you have it nice and tight, that your wrist is moist, that you're above this bump on either side, okay? You're not down next to your folding wrist. You're up here a little ways. And uh, you have moisture on your finger because you're going to be touching this side here. Now, I found it is okay to kind of just grab the whole watch or even just to hold my hand here like that. It still makes a strong enough electrode signal. We'll play with that as this one is uh, doing its chart. By the way, let me adjust the brightness down here so we can have a clean looking chart not washed out there. That's a special little app called Display Brightness. You can't get it anymore on the Google Play Store, but if you check our show notes and head over, there's a way you can get it. Anyway, um, let's see. Where was I? I, We're going to be touching this when we begin. So you get a three-second countdown to get everything ready. You hit Start Testing. Oh, okay. It's going to come up here. Get us in the position, and then you hit Start. And now, oh, it's, it's starting right away. All right. So you see I put my finger on the plate on the side. And I'm just balancing here, and I'm waiting. And now it's starting the chart. Hopefully you can see that from where you are. That's the R wave, I believe it's called. That strong peak that you see. And heart rate variability, the upper third number over there, is computed by the time delays between those RR waves or peaks. And uh, there are more variability, actually, the healthier you are. If it's exactly the same distance between them, it's very low heart rate variability. Generally means you're kind of stressed out. 
So you actually want to see some, some breadth and depth in there. Confirm to save the data, get my ECG details, and here you go. I got a heart rate of 70 with a QT interval. That's meaningful to those who do ECG readings. And then your heart rate variability at 14 milliseconds. Gives you your frequency, speed, gain, all these things. And then here's the actual waveform itself that you can look at in great detail. And um, analytic results, it's a standard sinus rhythm with no abnormality. If something was appearing that didn't look right, it would give a kind of an artificial intelligence assessment of it and give you a warning down here that you should go and explore and look at further. Now, when you exit out of here, back to where you were, you'll see that entry here. It'll keep records from previous days. Here's from yesterday. This one's got a little bit of a alarm on it. I'm not sure why. Sinus break, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not medical, guys. And here's the uh, the chart itself. And if you know what that all means, maybe you can get the details out of it. This is a times one, uh, two, three. You can actually do the playback, and it'll play it back at the speed that you want. Or you can get this waveform report. Press here, and you get the whole thing in a single page that you can look at. Lots of nice ways that you can display the information. And of course, each one of them are available to you um, throughout the entire listing of all of your different testing. And that's pretty much it. This is where you can rearrange the order, which I've done. It's a little bit different than when you get the stock app. And uh, you can delete some of them if they're not of interest to you uh, and make it just custom the way you'd like. Workouts is basically using the GPS in the... Uh, phone to go together with your watch and get you a track, a GPS track if you want to. And mine is where you set all the stuff up about you, your gender, your uh, everything, birth date, and all of that. And then uh, the watch itself is where you can set all these things up, including turning on sedentary reminder. This is where you turn the twist your wrist to see the time as well. Uh, heart rate alert. So all the switches you saw in the watch, you've got that here. This is where you can put in your private BP blood pressure normal rate. Instead of 120 over 80, if it's different than that, you set it there, save it, and calibrate it, and then use, your, use that to measure your uh, blood pressure. Same with blood glucose. If you have a, a typical value that you have, you can set that in here and then register against that. Because the watch actually is better at giving you deviation from a flat number than calculating that flat number. So like in temperature, if you knew you're normally 98.6 and it's two tenths of a degree higher, it'll tell you you're 96.8, right? Um, 98 point. Anyway... <laughs> It'll give you the number that you are deviant from the, the standard, and that's easier for these things to calculate. So you get better overall accuracy if you can put in your own numbers there. Weather settings, uh, switch settings, these are all the different things you can turn on, and I have them all on, and I'm losing maybe 15% per day in overall power in the last couple of days, so it's not like it runs out in one day or two days. It's going to be good for almost a week, if not more. Uh, that was the switch setting. You can take pictures and do your dials. Here you go. You have your basic dials. And then under more faces, it'll download or show you a bunch of the faces from the uh, app that are available for you. And you can pick any of those you want to to download to your watch as well. And because this is a round watch, of course, they're going to be round faces. But they do have digital, analog, lots of nice displays available. Okay, that is pretty much what I wanted to show you here. And that's the last of the tabs uh, on all of this. So I saved the best for last, as I often do, to make sure you watch as much of these as possible, right? Um, I have this little goodie. This is the bag for 10 bucks more when you order it that brings you the possibilities of connecting this in different ways. And we saw you showed you the uh, diagram of that. This is one where you can put the watch in here. We'll do it in a second. And just simply hold the in plates to get your measurement. 
or you can attach it to this and wear it as a chest strap or you can use these little buttons if you want to and uh, attach it that way to your body. Now the manual guides us into how to do this whole thing. We snap it into the plate like we saw. We've got uh, the app ready to go and we're going to be pressing PTT as the uh, actual activator for this one. Again, you can hold the buttons on the end or you can uh, wear it around your chest. We're going to get the output looking like this on the chart. And uh, you have four different types of measurement that we've already looked at. The watch style, the handheld. Notice the thumbs overlying the buttons on both sides. Chest strap and stick on. And then in terms of precautions and frequently asked questions, they are right here. Let's take a measurement. All of the measurements, except for when you're wearing it as a watch, depend on transferring the watch module over to this little device. And we're going to show you how to do that. It's actually important that you get it right. So first thing we do is we take the bands off. Then you make note of where the ECG connector is. Here's the plate. It looks kind of awkward, but the easiest way to know what to do is to align this plate with that little bump right there. And there's two little connectors here that will touch to these electric plates. So we're going to align them and simply snap it in till it clicks. And now it's good and solid and you're good to go. So to do a simple PPT test, you're gonna come over here, make sure you're set for PPT, grab your phone, ta-da! Make sure your phone is in the app and just sitting here. Tap the PTT, tap the button, it should light up right here, tap on this, and now we're live in the chart. All you got to do then is align your thumb, it's better to use it uh, with the long section in your left hand, cover these plates, it's jumping all over the place, I'm going to get this where you can see it, tap that button right there. Everything should settle down now because we're making an electrical connection through the body. And once it does, it'll level out and start doing a regular ECG. And there it goes. Sweet, huh? Now the other alternative is you simply take this with the buttons. They easily align right here. Snap, snap, and snap. All three of them are in. The proper way to wear this, otherwise you're going to get the uh, lines upside down, is you want to have the uh, buttons facing downward. So you're going to wrap this around the right side of your chest, loop it all the way around here, and then you just simply hook it in like so. With it around your chest, get these uh, plates moist, put a little bit of uh, water along the back of the belt, Hug it up close to under your nipples, pretty much right in the center, and you can continue taking your tests that way. Now, here's what a uh, six minute, because it's a minimum of six minutes, a six minute report looks like on this. We come back down here into ECG, and we've got a couple of different records in here. And I believe this would be this one here. There's the start time and the end time. And there we go. The ECG chart. But wait, there's more. Look at this. Routine testing. Maximum average value is in here. HRV, it's measuring the heart rate variability and the QT interval. And there's an analytic result that says there was no abnormally, um, no abnormality uh, detected in it. And that is in the section where it says it's a PTT recorded data. And of course, this one is the one where you're wearing it as a watch and you're getting the result uh, the standard way. Sweet. Okay, so that's everything about this uh, amazing watch related to the ECG section. We can 
cancel out of that, get back to the watch face. As you've seen, you've got tremendous amounts of other data in here from body temperature to blood glucose, blood oxygen, blood pressure, your uh, heart rate variability with Lorenz scatter diagrams in this, as well as continuous heart rate, last night's sleep time, and of whatever uh, workout you're doing, and give you your actual steps every single half hour. Wow, this is a fun one. Once again, uh, it's, it's really an interesting one that has all of it. Blood glucose, temperature, and ECG with all the standard stuff. It's the VKE400. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.